More now on our top story. Today, as we've been reporting, is the 20th anniversary of the Bali bombings. 202 people, including 88 Australians, tragically lost their lives in the terrorist attack. Joining me live now in the Perth studio is survivor and author Anthony Savilicic. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming in. I know you've been at the Kings Park Memorial in, in Perth this morning. How important was it you, for you to, to be there and for this to be marked the way it was 20 years on? Oh, yeah, I think it's very important to uh, you know, attend the ceremony and pay our respects to those uh, people who uh, unfortunately uh, died in the attack and uh, also to uh, catch up with some of the other survivors uh, on, on, on the night. Mm. You've brought your book in, you've written uh, your own story about this uh, Phoenix Rising. Uh, you've let me know that you're, you're comfortable talking about, about the events of that night. Just share with our viewers um, what your experience was. I know that you were partially buried. Do you remember much of that? Yes, yeah, so I was having a few beers in the club and uh, I was just about to leave when uh, I moved to the front of the bar and um, I sort of struck up a conversation with two Australian girls that were on holiday there and uh, and uh, I was just about to get up and leave when there was an almighty bang down the road at uh, Paddy's bar and uh, everyone's sort of eyes were fixated on, on what was happening at Paddy's and we didn't realise at the time that there was a car bomb at the front of the sari and it was about to go off. So uh, about 20 seconds later the, the car bomb exploded and uh, all I remember after that was uh, waking up lying on my back, uh, sort of buried under the, uh, the rubble and, and the, the debris that had fallen on top of me. So I had to uh, basically clear that and then uh, get up on my feet and, and, and try and work out where to go and, and how to get out of the place. And uh, eventually I managed to get out and uh, uh, to, to safety. And uh, yeah, really uh, a very uh, sudden change in the environment. You know, one minute it was a pub bustling with people, dance floor, music, everything's going, you know, really normal, like a normal pub scene, and then the next minute just complete devastation and everything had just disappeared. And everywhere I looked, there was just fire and smoke everywhere. And what happened next? Where did you go next? Yeah, so I walked uh, about another 20 metres and uh, it, was, it was pitch black, couldn't see anyone, and I was starting to think if I made the right decision here. And eventually I came across some other survivors uh, that had been injured, and so I sat down next to them and uh, tried to get my breath back because by that stage my, my lungs had filled with smoke and I was gasping for breath. And uh, uh, I looked back at the sari and I recall seeing smoke just billowing out of the rear of the sari and a lot of shouting and screaming coming from the back of the, of the sari club. Uh, and then I, I didn't really know what to do. Uh, I felt sort of helpless for the first time in my life and uh, so I started shouting as well for help and uh, as loud as I could and uh, shortly after that a, a young a Balinese man came along with a, uh, a makeshift stretcher and he uh, stretched me out of that area which is really good. And then I understand that when you were getting treatment you're in a coma for weeks. What injuries did you actually sustain? It's remarkable you are able to do all of that considering those injuries. Yes, yeah, so I had some significant injuries. Uh, I suffered from hypovolemic shock when I was in Darwin, along with renal failure and acute traumatic coagulopathy. coagulopathy. I can never say that word, but anyway. Uh, and then also uh, severe swelling. And when I got to Perth, I was placed uh, in an induced coma, which went for 44 days. Uh, and I had burns to 60% of my body. And at one stage there, I also suffered some septic shock. So uh, uh, pretty severe injuries. Uh, and uh, it was only really because of the medical intervention carried out, carried out by Professor Fiona Wood that uh, it saved my life. Oh, and she is an absolute hero. After 44 days in a coma, what state did you wake up in? How had your life changed from that point? Yeah, so basically when I woke up, uh, I couldn't really move anything. Everything, uh, because I'd spent so much time in a coma, uh, all my muscles and joints had sort of gone to sleep. So it was a real mission to get everything moving again. And uh, I spent uh, the next 13 months in rehabilitation, uh, doing a lot of physiotherapy, occupational therapy and the like, uh, just to try and get my movement back. Uh, but uh, eventually, with a, a lot of effort and, and, and thanks to all the physiotherapists that helped out, uh, I managed to get most of my movement back. So, yeah, it's great. Oh, an absolute team effort by the sounds of it. So 20 years on, looking back, do you feel like justice has been served? There's obviously been a lot of debate about uh, Uma Patek, one of the uh, men accused, well, uh, found guilty of creating the explosives, getting out of jail early. Do you follow all of that debate now or, or do you just try and block that out and, and move on? 
Yeah, it's hard not to sort of, uh, you know, read about it or follow it. But, uh, yeah, if he does get out, I think it'll be pretty disappointing, you know, given that he was the man responsible for, for making the bomb, which killed 202 people, including 88 Australians, and injured another 240. And I don't think, you know, 10 years is really enough uh, you know, punishment for that sort of crime. Have you been back to Bali in the meantime? How do you feel about that island now? Yeah, I've been back twice. So once for the 10th anniversary and then again in 2018. And uh, look, I love the Balinese people. They're, they're great. They're really warm, friendly people. And, uh, you know, I, I love the island and, uh, you know, uh, it was a real tragedy what occurred there on October 12, 2002. They certainly didn't deserve to be bombed, but, uh, you know, we'll be going back uh, soon as well. Anthony, it is an amazing, remarkable story um, that you have and that you've written about. We have um, a picture of the, the book's front cover to show our viewers. Phoenix Rising, um, for our viewers who might want to read more about your experiences and your remarkable road to recovery. We really appreciate you sharing your story with us on such an important day. Thanks so much for coming in, Anthony. Appreciate it. Thank you.